Hello world, first up in today's exploration of cybersecurity tech news, Ukrainian hacktivists are hitting Putin where it really hurts, Russia's alcohol supply. This is thanks to Ukraine's IT army, an international alliance of pro-Ukrainian hacktivists, which are known for using DDoS attacks to take offline Russian energy companies, banks, military websites, and so on, generally going after important Russian infrastructure. But now, in response to Russia's special military operation, they've launched a special sobriety operation operation. Taking aim at Russia's Alcohol Accounting Information System, also known as the EGAIS. Now, this is a government controlled system that all alcohol manufacturers and distributors in Russia are required by law to use in order to report their alcohol sales. And they have to do this in real time. So, if this website is down, then distributors simply cannot sell alcohol to stores. And if there's one way to get under the skin of Russians, it's to mess with their vodka. So, Ukraine's IT army, under the command of the Ukrainian government, themselves, directed the hundreds of thousands of subscribers to their Telegram channel to DDoS servers associated with this alcohol accounting system. They launched these attacks at the beginning of this month, which didn't come at a good time for Russia, as Russia has a whole string of national holidays in early May, for which a steady supply of vodka is no doubt essential. And right on cue, reports started popping up in Russian media of large-scale failures in that alcohol accounting system attributed to the IT army of Ukraine. And other than just making headlines, there was some real-world impact. The downtime seems to have lasted roughly two days, and one Russian alcohol distributor reported within this time they failed to upload about 70% of invoices to the system, and that warehouses of finished products were overflowing due to the inability to move goods from factories to distribution centers. In response, the Russian government has implemented IP geoblocking, preventing the service from receiving traffic from outside Russia, dampening the attack, and bringing to an end this special sobriety operation. The IT army of Ukraine has since moved on to attacking other Russian servers, and I'll make sure to link my previous videos on this IT army below. But interestingly, I noticed the subscriber counts on their Telegram channel that they use to dish out commands is down from 309,000 since my previous video. Is that just due to spam accounts being pruned? Or are people losing interest in pro-Ukrainian hacktivism? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Next up, Costa Rica, known for their national parks, volcanoes, and sloths, has declared a national emergency. But whatever for, the culprit is ransomware. Ransomware which in the last few weeks has crippled half a dozen Costa Rican government agencies, the main victim being the Ministry of Finance, which has been without digital services since April 18th. This is a disaster for Costa Rica. The country's customs platform outage alone has caused losses of $200 million for exporters. And so, in the last few days, the president declared a national emergency. The group behind this string of ransomware attacks is none other than the internet's current number one cybercrime gang, Conti. And to give you an idea of just how much havoc these guys have caused in the last couple of years, the US has a bounty of $15 million on the heads of Conti, whereas they only have a bounty of $5 million for North Korean cyber miscreants, which values the downfall of Conti three times more than that of North Korean hackers. So. Conti stole almost 700 gigabytes of data from the Costa Ricans, which includes the source code for government services, databases, and historical taxpayer information considered sensitive. The gang demanded a sum of $10 million in crypto from the government in return for a promise not to release the data, but the government refused to even talk with the group, let alone pay the ransom. Conti, as you can imagine, was not thrilled with this, and has so far released almost all of the treasure trove for free publicly on their dark website, which no doubt cyber vultures will descend upon to dissect, trying to somehow profit from all the personal information contained within. Conti also posted a message for the Costa Rican leader. All this could have been avoided by paying. You would have made your country really safe, but you will turn to Biden and his henchmen. This old fool will soon die. There are also accusations that this attack was initiated by another government, but Conti says, no government of other countries has finalized this attack. Everything was carried out by me with a successful affiliate. My name is UNC1756. I will definitely carry out attacks of a more serious format with a larger team. Costa Rica is but a demo version. Now, ransomware gangs will often big themselves up to sound scary. This talk of Costa Rica being a demo version doesn't really mean much. 
Now, of course, this story is a pretty good example of just how detrimental ransomware can be. But if you need another example, I noticed a new post on Conti's blog titled for Peru, in which they claim to have breached the Peruvian Ministry of Finance and have already started leaking data. Next up, the CIA has used their Instagram page to put out a plea, calling on Russians with access to confidential information that might help Ukraine to come forward and submit tips directly to the CIA. The post was entirely in Russian, which led to some people thinking that the CIA's account had actually been hacked. But the post is legit, and other than just linking Russians to the CIA's clearnet and dark website, which has been online since 2019, it does have some basic advice, like not using your home internet connection to submit tips and using Tor or a VPN. Now, Instagram might seem like an odd choice to put out a plea like this, particularly considering it's been banned in Russia for the last two months. However, tens of millions of Russians are still probably using it thanks to the surge in Russian VPN downloads ever since the invasion. Currently, the top 10 VPN apps are being downloaded 300,000 times per day in Russia. But that's not necessarily 300,000 people, as it is quite common for people to have multiple VPNs. Also, we can't assume all those people are grabbing VPNs just so they can get anti-Putin news. I imagine a good chunk of those downloads will be from people who just want to access things like Netflix and TikTok. But apparently, many more Russians than usual are trying to get in touch with the CIA, which is what may have prompted this post. But this is coming from an anonymous CIA source talking to the Washington Post, so you've got to take this with the pinchiest of salt pinches. This video was made possible by PlexTrack, the cybersecurity reporting and workflow management platform that empowers continuous assessment and effective collaboration between teams to ensure you win the right security battles. Create assessment reports in half the time and collaborate throughout the remediation lifecycle. Centralize your remediation efforts across all scans, assessments, and audits with powerful risk visualizations, scanner and ticketing integrations, and enhanced analytics communicates risks clearly across your team and in real time, working more efficiently and effectively with PlexTrack. You can claim your free month of the PlexTrack platform exclusively for Satonic viewers using the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching and you know what to do. Tickle that notification bell and follow me on the Instagrams for behind the scenes content and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.